Hi, it's John Croshaw here from Indie Author Mastermind. Today I have another guest. I'm joined by Daniel Wilcox. Now, if you've not heard of Daniel Wilcox, he's an international best-selling author, award-winning podcaster, author coach, and speaker. He writes non-fiction for authors and creatives, as well as dark fiction for the twisted reader, spanning the genres of horror, post-apoc, and sci-fi. How are you today, Daniel? I'm good. You make me sound so impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just reading from your uh, thing, so, you know, thanks for that. <laughs> I know, it was deliberate. No, yeah. like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all good. How, how are you? It's been a while since we've sat down and I had a proper little catch-up. Yeah, I think the last time we did it was was when, um, when was it? It was Sheffield, wasn't it? When um, we just kind of met yes. up in a cafe and it was... In that, in that brief weird. interlude in pandemic breaks. Yes, so kind of taking advantage of just seeing people we like <laughs> in a mm-hmm, very mm-hmm. small window before uh, the lockdown happened again. But, yes, that yeah, was that... that was the night I was in, or well, the day that I was incredibly tired after, because I, I live about two hours from Sheffield. So I camped overnight because I'm getting into camping just because I like to go out and into nature. And, you know, it's a cheap way to, to stay out somewhere overnight. And I remember it was that night that I had about two hours sleep because I the, the site that I booked was full of sheep. And the entire night they were just bleating. And so I kind of I don't know how I, I came across that day. I don't remember much of it, but I remember <laughs> speaking to you um, and sitting down with a coffee. But it was a very sort of tired day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. I mean, um, as long as I bored you, that's that's the main thing. Um, so <laughs> the main thing I want to talk to you about is you have done a lot of collaborative projects. And yes. I know that a lot of indie authors um, kind of dip the toes into collaboration or want to do it. And, you know, I, I thought I'd talk to the man who's written a book on it. So, um, you know, I suppose where we start off is, is asking kind of how you got into collaborating with other authors and other creative projects yeah so I mean it's it's one of those things I never intentionally stepped into the arena to do um when I first started writing it was with the intention of you know writing my own stuff and I kind of believed what everyone tells you which is the writing journey is a very lonely experience and which is true to an extent because when you sit down to write the words you can't really have someone next to you also doing the same thing there has to be you know that focused time where you are by yourself to create and to produce the words um, but I very quickly found that be, and I found this quote the other day and I, I need to find out who um, it's attributed to, but it's, you know, writing is lonely, but being an author doesn't have to be. And that's kind of stuck with me a lot along the way, because I, I released my first novella in 2016, uh, 2015, and then started speaking to another local indie author who I came across through, through happenstance. And just in talking with him and he read my work, I read his work. And we both liked what we saw, like he was uh, he just recently joined forces with Luke Condor and Ben Errington. And sort of that was the creation of the studio uh, story studio that I'm um, with Hawk and Cleaver. And that was kind of just a, a weird accidental step into producing with other people. And the interesting part of that was we were, so when Hawk and Cleaver officially started, um, and the, again, this was sort of end of 2015, early 2016, we, the idea behind it was basically we're all individual writers, but we're kind of writing in the same sort of arenas. So why don't we create something where we can put our own work out, but each individual magnifies the group as we go. And it just seemed like a good step to, you know, try and accelerate what we were putting out to try and get some cross promotion with other people that we trusted. Um, and kind of it, it all sprang off from there. But I've just, as you say, I've collaborated a lot along the way. So I am uh, one of the founders of the Other Stories podcast, which is horror fiction we put out every Monday, um, which podcast that's doing exceptionally well. Um, I have collaborated with people like Luke Condor, uh, Jay Thorne, Michael Anderley, um, and, you know, sort of short stories I've collaborated with people on. I've worked on other things that have never quite made it off the ground. Um, I run a podcast with Sasha Black. So it's kind of what I found along the way is that I, I can take myself so far and I'm definitely one of these people that learns a lot and I can you know work on my craft and everything else but by opening myself up to working with other people it's amazing how much more you learn from that other person even if you don't necessarily agree with everything they do like you take the bits that work for you you discard the bits that might not necessarily fit your personality but it just as an experience it kind of helps you grow yeah so I mean for me I mean you're you're aware of this but I I am reticent to collaborate with other authors just because I mm. went into it in the past and, and basically I've been burnt by Got it, burnt. you know, two, mm. two, two other authors not delivering after me <laughs> months writing. Um, mm. So it, it's kind of like, how do you avoid that kind of thing where, 
you know, you've got, you've, you've met someone you, you get on with well, that you're friends with them, say, and, you know, you, even writing together seems, seems to work and you've got ideas bubbling, but it's that bit, it's the actual, how do you know, how do you know it's going to work or is that the kind of part of the risk? I mean, there's always going to be an element of risk involved. Um, and that's kind of where the biggest part of collaboration comes in, isn't it? In, in that initial sort of conversation. Um, but I mean, I'll, I'll preface this by saying that, so a collaboration doesn't necessarily have to be two people working 50-50 on a novel. There is such a wide spectrum of how you can collaborate, whether that's, you know, you do all the writing and someone else handles your marketing, whether it's, you know, someone jumps in and just helps you with that first draft and then you take it from there. Like there's no there's no real definition on what collaboration is. Um, I kind of say in the book that you say you don't collaborate, but at every step of your journey, there will be a point where you're working with someone else. So you you have an editor, you have a cover designer, like obviously like there's a certain element of collaborating with your readers and trusting that they're going to read your product. So none of what we do, if we want to publish and be successful with our writing comes in, in doing it all alone or, you know, that's not, <laughs> there are some people that do it all by themselves and they're very impressive people, but that's just not me. Um, so, you know, it's, there's an entire array of possibility of what you can bring to a collaboration, what someone else can bring to you. I know that, for example, with myself, um, I love the first draft and I've learned to love editing over the years, but earlier on, I didn't like the editing process. And it was really nice working with Luke on our first novels where I would write the first draft of something and then he would take the edits and then we'd pass it back and kind of, it, it, it enabled you to fill in those gaps. But to circle this round to kind of the crux of your question, um, when I was writing collaboration for authors, I actually thought that I, I came up with the different sections that I was going to cover. And the first part before you've even sort of agreed and, and created some kind of agreement, if you know, I, um, I would encourage you to do, but not everyone does. Um, that section itself basically became about half the book because everything that goes into creating a successful collaboration comes in those first conversations. Um, you need to be able to speak to someone else truthfully you need to be able to know what it is you can bring to the equation what someone else can bring to the equation you need to know where your limits are where your boundaries are and you need to not put yourself in a position in which you're setting yourself up to fail so i know some people who you know they'll write sort of a thousand two thousand words a week and that's like a good pace for them and that's fine you know they've got other commitments they've got life they've got sort of marriage everything else um, but then they'll go into a collaboration or a possible collaboration with someone else who is saying like, this is, I, I produce faster than that. And there'll be that kind of excitement depending on the level of it. If they're, if this author is further ahead of them, where they'll go, yes, like, I cannot miss this opportunity, but you haven't tested yourself to make sure that you can do that. So in saying yes, without reserve, you're already putting yourself up in a position to fail. You have to really critically look at what the collaboration is going to take out from you. Anything else you've got going on that might get in the way. Um, and you have to just, as I say, the crux of it is just is being honest. Um, and then when it comes around to agreeing on the principles of what you want to do, um, there are different elements, depending again, like each collaboration will be individual, but you want to look at sort of the planning, you want to look at the writing, the publishing, the marketing, what happens with finance, you need to address each of these steps, especially if you're working on a book, to make sure that all bases are covered and nothing is left unspoken. And only then can you really kind of look at some kind of agreement. Um, it's it's a difficult conversation to have sometimes, but you really, if every successful collaboration I've had has sprung from those early conversations and me saying like, here's what I'm prepared to do, here's what I'm not prepared to do. And, you know, I've had conversations with people where they've brought something to the table and we've backed and forward it and we've like sort of shifted ideas and seen how we can work for both. And at the end of the day, if it, if it doesn't work, it, it doesn't work. And you need to put yourself in a position in which you're comfortable at saying no, if it isn't right for you because it doesn't have to happen without your permission. And there are nice ways to say no. And actually sometimes saying no will save you so much heartbreak over saying yes and then getting three or four months down the line. And like you say, people then not delivering, not turning up. And like, it's that's kind of where it all falls apart. Um, and the final thing I, I kind of will add and which I've touched on a little bit, get, get a written agreement. Whatever you do, get a written agreement. I know that the idea of contracts and, and that sort of stuff can be quite scary for people. But there's a reason that they're there and I call them disagreements in the book because they're a piece of paper that really you don't, it should be invisible in a collaboration, you shouldn't need it. Um, but it's there as a fail, a fail safe if you do have a disagreement and things don't entirely go your way that you've got something that, you know, if someone hasn't delivered, you can say, okay, you haven't done this, which now means I can take that work and move forward without you or, you know, whatever the situation is. Um, so it's, it all starts before you've even signed on the dotted line 
that's kind of what, what determines whether it's going to be successful or not. Awesome. I mean, for me, it's, um, you know, I've got this universe that I'm building, my fantasy universe, the Ravenglass universe. And obviously I've done a big series in that and I'm writing two other series in that world. And I really don't like writing first drafts. So the idea of getting a first draft to someone else, getting them to do it, and then handing it back to me so I can make it all beautiful and in my world. That's mm. that's amazing. Um, so I, I do like that idea. I think that is something I'd like to look at. I suppose it is about finding the right people. I mean, so you, you found people just by what kind of people you already knew, people you met, or how, how did you go about having these collaborations? I mean, it's been a bit of a mix. Um, when I first kind of took the plunge of Hawk and Cleaver, I knew Matt Butcher, um, who was the indie author who I was kind of backward and forward with. Although, to be fair, I didn't really know him well. He just kind of invited me in and I got excited by the opportunity. Um, and then when I met Luke and Ben, um, it kind of, the, the guys resonated with me and it seemed like we were all on the same page. And, you know, this was very early on, so we didn't really have agreements in place at the time. Like, a lot of this is is learned along the way. Um, but they were just, they were good people. I I like to feel like I have quite a good gut instinct when it comes with sort of, the people that I, I come across and whether or not I can work with them. Um, but it's kind of varied along the way. Like with my um, entry into Jay Thorne's American Demon Hunter series, that was a case of, I saw, I think I heard him on the podcast that he was taking on other authors and collaborating. And I didn't really know him from Adam. I think I we might have interviewed him on the Story Studio podcast years ago. Um, but I I reached out because I liked what he was doing. I felt like I had something I could offer to the space. And, you know, we had we had a conversation um, and the one of the, the big tips I offer in the book and that I think is just invaluable to I, I still use it now just with most collaborations I get involved in is I'll put the pitch forward and I will say, for example, with Jay um, and again later with with Michael Andley, like you're you're writing something. I feel like I can add this to it because and obviously you need to understand what it is that you're getting involved in. You can't just go cold and say, I want to write in it without you know knowing what it is, because that comes across as sort of scammy. Um, but I was I'll say like. I've always been told that if I don't ask, the answer's always no. So here's me throwing my name in the hat. Like if you feel interested in the opportunity, if you you know want to talk more, then take it. If not, it's absolutely fine. And I always try and give people that option to say no and that comfort to say no, because once you add that and give whoever you're asking permission to be able to say no, they're much more likely to consider it. Whereas if you kind of make it feel like an obligation of like, I really want to work with you already you're on the back foot and you're going but maybe I don't want to work with you and it just doesn't set it up in a good way um so it has it's it's been a mix I think earlier on it was much more just reaching out and taking the gamble on things that I saw that I felt fitted with what I was trying to do um and like I say there was stuff there were things that I genuinely thought I could bring value to that space and help um in my way um but then as sort of time goes on it gets to a point where I I am sort of more connected now in the author sphere. And so there are people that I am much more familiar with that I think, you know, I've seen your track record, I know what you do, and I'm happy to have that conversation. When me and um, Sasha started the Next Level Authors podcast, that was a random throwaway comment because we'd been chatting online um, quite a lot over sort of a period of about four or five months. We would do writing sprints together and we were in a very similar space in our author journey. We'd recently both gone full time. And after that conversation and just sort of the dynamic and the excitement, it just it just happened. But in that example, I knew Sasha, like we'd we've been speaking for months and, and it was helpful. So it's um it's a mix. I know it is hard to go from nothing into entering into a collaboration, but I think the first steps you really need to take are just sort of scouting out the community and just seeing if there's someone doing something similar, someone out there who either they're on your level, they're trying to do the same thing, which was the case with Hawk and Cleaver whether they're a little bit further ahead and you think, you know, I could help you, but, you know, undoubtedly there's an element of by working with you, that's also going to help me. Um, so it's sort of beneficial on both sides. And you just kind of try and scout out and give it a go and really, as I say, sort of consider what it would mean to collaborate on that. Because um, along my collaboration journey, I have jumped into lots of different genres. And in the grand scheme of things, that hasn't necessarily helped my personal success. But at the same time, I've created a series of books in different places that I am very, very proud of and learned a lot of things that I otherwise wouldn't have had the chance to do. So, you know, there are sort of pros and cons to, to any kind of collaboration. Yeah, so that, that's, um, I mean, you, you mentioned, I don't know, pitching 
people like Jay Thorne and, and Michael Underline and stuff. So did you kind of go, I would love, you know, I'd love to work with you, say so, you know, if you want. Um, what do you mm-hmm. want me to do? Or was it, I I love your series. I've got this idea for a story. Did you pitch them an actual story mm-hmm. or was it more of a kind of, I'd love to have a discussion about a story with you, if that makes sense? Yeah, not there wasn't anything specific initially. I'd um, I'd read some of the American Demon Hunters for Jay um, and in full transparency, I was kind of, um, I, I, I went to Michael knowing, or I, I'd seen a lot of Michael's growth and I'd seen a lot of what he was doing and, you know, he was bringing on these authors and he was producing these amazing books that were sort of getting rave reviews and the universe seemed to be massive. Um, and with Jay, I reached out to him. We had a brief chat in which he kind of presented because he had a very specific formula for how American Demon Hunters needed to be because, you know, it's his series, it's his world, it's his characters. It was a very different experience to how it was with Michael. So that was a case of me jumping into someone else's world, taking their characters and trying to present this story. And so he had this structure, he had this way of working um, that was beneficial, obviously, for him. And it gave checkpoints along the way to go, okay, yes, this will work. Yes, this won't work. The initial seed of that was um, pitch me. Like, I'm, I'm happy to have you on there. Let's like see if we can get a story idea going. So his characters who had traditionally been in about six or seven books in America, me being British and those authors being American, I thought, you know, let's bring the characters on vacation to the UK. And so I kind of brought a bit of a unique spin in that way because I know London and I know a lot of what can happen down there. And it it adds kind of like a different angle to the story. And um, he was gracious and he was happy and he enjoyed the story. And obviously everything went forward um, successfully, which was good. But then with Michael, it was an entirely different collaboration because he had the universe and then I brought in the story. So again, I had that conversation. Um, and actually initially, and this is one of the things that I, I really, really respect him for, um, is I think in this situation, he had come on the podcast. So we sort of had a brief, you know, um, face-to-face encounter. And afterwards I pitched, you know, if you don't ask, the answer is always no. Like, I'd love to see if there's any way that I can kind of get involved. Um, and then we we had a bit of a back and forth and he said, you know, what, is it that you're passionate about writing? And I said, well, horror and post-apocalyptic. And he came back and said, I don't have that. So, you know, if anything does pop up, I'll let you know. Um, and I took that took that on the chin, you know, I didn't want to be writing in a place where I wasn't sort of personally trying to go. Because again, it's that thing of, if our values don't align, it's not going to be a successful collaboration and I'm just going to be unhappy. Um, and then it was about five months later that he sort of contacted me out of the blue and said, hey, are you still interested? I've got this horror part of the universe that I'm looking at opening up and I've got some other people interested. Do you want to jump on a call? And we we jumped on a call, um, uh, a few different authors from his universe just to kind of discuss it, went through the process. And again, there was there were always those, those checkpoints. And he was very sort of explicit about each step, which, you know, the clearer you can be with how it works, the better. And I think that if you're going to work in a collaboration, by all means, test and put in sort of check marks along the way. Um, so that was a case of, okay, here's what we're building. Send an idea for a story. And so I did, they liked it. And then sort of along the first, because writing in that universe has to be in a very specific style. Um, so for the first sort of 10, 20,000 words, it was very, each couple of pages was very critically sort of edited and feedback to make sure that, you know, I understood the voice and the tone and, you know, but there's horror, but it's not as sort of explicit as the horror that I normally write. So I had to sort of dial that back a bit and all these kind of um, checkpoints. And then finally we got to a point where I could run and I could, I could write the books. Um, But yeah, it's, it's a different, like I say, it's a different process for every single one, but it still comes back to those universal principles of, you know, making sure that things work, making sure everyone's happy, not just saying, yes, let's write a book and then signing on the line. It's like, why don't you start with a short story or why don't you, you know, present an idea and then have those discussions before you both commit and say, yes, we're going to jump into this project that could take a year, two years of our lives. And it is, it's a big undertaking. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. So start small, incremental maybe. Um, yeah. So, you know, we, I suppose there's a things, you know, this is a, another aspect is like the issues of, of rights and, and legal stuff, like who owns what, how do you get royalties? Um, you know, how, how does this work? I mean, does it just depend on the project or is it just like, okay, this is what I usually do. This, these are the kind of general guidelines and yeah. Yeah, it's um, uh, the answer for every question of collaboration is going to be, it depends on the collaboration. Um, but yeah, there are, there are certain things that you can look at. So I think 
being very critical and analyzing the distribution of work is helpful like if one person's just writing the draft and i'm not trying to minimize writing a draft it's still a big undertaking but if someone writes a first draft and someone else is doing the editing and the marketing and you know everything else to kind of connect it all together then maybe consider a slightly different split um i've done things before where initially we went in this 50 50 and i've realized that my part in it hasn't been as big as someone else's and so i've said look you take 60 or 70 and i'll take 40 or 30 and it's it's just trying to be respectful of the other person um if the, the minute you're greedy that will sour a, re, a relationship a collaboration the minute you start sort of getting a bit um money-eyed it's just it's just not a good way to go but it's you know just look at what it is you're bringing to the table and how much you think that financially is worth um and then again put that in the agreement put it down in writing make sure that you both have signed it and work your way forward from there i do actually have in the book um i'm pretty sure it's been a while since i wrote it i do have sort of like a template in there for sort of basic things that you want in an agreement so sort of covering ip rights and royalties and sort of management and um distribution of responsibilities there's, there's sort of like an outline in there of things to consider that you don't necessarily need every element depending on what you're doing but could be useful to use um, i've also got templates in there for sort of messages and ways to reach out to people depending on how well you know them because the cold call is obviously de very different to someone that you know quite well um but yeah it's you know there are so many different ways we are quite fortunate to be in 2022 with collaborations because going back five six years it would a lot of the um sort of sharing of royalties was just a pain in the ass because it was all manually handled it was all spreadsheets and it was all paypal and, and kind of just someone manually doing it but now you have um programs like publish drive and abacus and drafted digital has got sort of a, a royalty distributor built into the sort of payment system um that so much of it can be automated and sorted for you that it kind of takes a lot of the energy out of you having to do that manually Awesome. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. So that's that's good. Um, and I suppose yeah, yeah. As, as a kind of final thing, then, I mean, you've talked about how it was five, six years ago. I mean, where do you see the future in this kind of space in terms of author collaborations? Man, like it's already shifted so much because I think since lots of people push towards the rapid release model and sort of there's definitely been a big movement towards universe building as opposed to series building and i think universe building and i know this is definitely a direction you're heading and i i i meant to say as well just massive congratulations on, on raven glasses like I'm, I'm really happy to see that working out so well for you um but it's universe is definitely a way to go and collaborations are very powerful when it comes to that if you can write a flagship series and then expand on that world you've already got a captive audience that you're introducing to other elements and they've already liked your first sample so they're going to spit, spin out in other directions and you know the last four or five years have really been indie authors going from just being solo publishers to being mini publishing enterprises there are quite a few big big authors now that you know constantly work in collaborations and bring writers in and it benefits the new writers it benefits them because there's more stuff for their audience like it's it's a win-win all round I think really that's just going to continue expanding. Um, I think as we go forward, there are going to be more and more services that make it easier to collaborate. I know that um, Dave Chesson with his Atticus um, formatting software, a lot of that is sort of emphasized around jumping in and allowing sort of shared documents and ways for people to sort of work together. And I, I just think it's just going to grow. It's just going to get simpler and a lot of that friction will be gone um, and it'll just kind of grow from there. But I, I really do see these sort of uh, indie publishing enterprises being the potential future of the publishing industry. Um, when you look at sort of the decline of the big five and the traditional publishing, I, I, there's still a place for them in the grand scheme of things, I believe. But I do think that indies will certainly go on to, to rise above and become these sort of mammoth monoliths of collaborations and, and shared universes. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really interesting to see. Yeah, well, I hope that's going to be the next step for me, to be honest, is I, I want to make, make my universe a one that other authors want to play in, basically. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's yeah. what I hope. And you've got the, yeah, you've got the potential for it. Yeah, I hope so. Just and, trying and, to make the and, collaborations without <laughs> getting a sour face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and also just to kind of think beyond just the, the writing, you know, to think beyond just the books, to think in terms of video games and 
you know, mm-hmm. thinking in terms of a universe and an IP rather than just I'm writing yes. stories for books. You know, I think that is that's the future, like more of a multimedia thing. Yeah, and then yeah, absolutely. That's not to say, you know, all the developments with NFTs and cryptos and all that stuff. How that's going to play? I think there's <laughs> exciting times ahead with this for sure. So exciting and very very strange. Yeah, but it's it's great. It's like the uh, you know the the old bastions of culture have just been knocked down, and we're there to kind of try something new. I think it's going to be looked back as like the renaissance this time in terms of just the type of fast developments and things like that. So yeah, it's really well, it's just it, yeah, it's shifting the power from the uh, the um, corporations down into the customer and giving each individual a chance. Cause I, I come back to this again and again with um, sort of when people are sort of like the secret of the success of the other stories. And my answer is always consistency it is we live a, we live in an attention economy where if something isn't satisfying your needs, there are a thousand other things that are out there just waiting to entertain you. Yeah. And so that is, like, it's a powerful thing, but I think it's something that a lot of people are still trying to get their head around is the fact that, you know, the customer really has choice and it's not so much about you anymore making the thing that you want. There is an element of that, but you still have to make sure that what you're producing is you know, resonating with readers, with viewers, with gamers, whatever it is your, your audience is, um, really sort of paying attention to what they want and providing and being consistent. Yeah, well, I think the thing that a lot of authors don't look at is they're not just competing with other authors they are competing with netflix they're competing with yes. video games they're competing with pornhub and only fans mm-hmm. <laughs> and all these things like that it's like it, sleep even you know going going and eating some biscuits we, we're competing with that we, we've mm-hmm. got to kind of create this thing where you're almost putting readers in a, in a state of hallucination and hip- hypnosis or whatever it is with your writing i think yeah. that's, that's the kind of key kind of creating that, that imaginary world um yeah so I'm going to finish up the podcast now. I've got a few questions that I like to ask all the guests. Um, mm-hmm. So try and keep these as short as you can. No. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Make them really long. Just, yeah, whatever. Uh, so <laughs> question one, what does being an indie mean to you? It means freedom, simply put. Awesome. Um, what is the one piece of advice you would give to a new author? don't base the success of a author career on the success of your first book because it is your first work and no one is good when they first start and to be successful it's about longevity improvement and craft awesome and this might have a crossover actually but what's the biggest mistake you see indie authors make you think i'd have a quick answer to this one (laughs) Um, forgetting that writing must coexist alongside their actual life and the other elements that demand their attention good answer um what one book do you think all indie authors should read the war of art by stephen pressfield yes that is a very good book very good collaboration for authors by daniel (laughs) (laughs) i said one yeah so uh okay finally then you you've got a book you've got the cover you know you've got the blurb you've got all that stuff you've got five hundred dollars to launch the book where does your money go it goes into newsletter promo swaps massively um book bub if you can get some opportunities with that and I would argue for myself, um, probably Facebook ads, but that's only because I'm less experienced at this point with Amazon ads. Brilliant. So, yeah, let us know where we can find you online if you want to give your links, your books, anything like that. You know, go ahead. Sure thing, yeah. Um, so I am over at www.danielwilcox.com and that's W-I-L-L-C-O-C-K-S. Um, I'm also at activatedauthors.com, which is where I do all of my author coaching and help indie authors turn from writers into authors. And uh, I'm on socials at Wilcox Author. And one book that I would recommend of mine um, that would be infinitely helpful for people is the self-publishing blueprint, which takes you from zero to publishing your first book and all the steps in between. Does that book feature my Wizard of the Wasteland? 
or is that a different it one? Does I'm <laughs> sure it is this one, yeah, because it's all about covers. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. For those watching YouTube, we have John's cover in there next to Zach Bohannon and mine and Luke's, just to talk about. That's mostly talking about sort of um, uh, trends in genre and also how you can have different from the same. Awesome. Yep. Uh, check Thank that book that. out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, um, this has been the Indie Author Mastermind. Thank you very much, Dan, for coming on. Um, I think there's a lot to uh, decompress and a lot to kind mm -hmm. of take away from this conversation. If you are on social media, you can follow Indie Author Mastermind on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube, or Indie Mastermind on the Twitter, because obviously you can't have that many letters. And for everything <laughs> else, it's IndieAuthorMastermind.com. So please follow, please share, all that good stuff. So thanks again, Dan. Thank you for doing all that you're doing, John. Awesome. So until next time, everyone, cheerio. <laughs>